，女士们、先生们。Ni hao, fans of Shukfustan, and welcome to day three coverage of the Beijing 2022 Paralympics on Keep the Flame Alive, the podcast for fans of the Olympics and Paralympics. I am your host Jill Jarris, and through the plexiglass, I am joined by my lovely co-host Allison Brown. Allison, ni hao, how are you? Ni hao.、Oh, I've been with you all day, so I think you know how I am. <laughs> So we didn't we didn't really intend to spend the whole day together going to、no. the same events, but that's just how the transport worked out, and I can't read a schedule, and that's what we ended up with. You know, the scheduling is tough because you have to look. Today we went out to the mountains, so that meant looking at the train app, and you also have to look at the、uh, My 2022 app to get the bus schedule, and then. If you want to be precise, you need to pull up a PDF that tells you how long the bus ride takes, so you can plan out your. Would we we had bus to hotel, hotel bus to the MMC, MMC to train、mm. station bus, train, bus to the terminal, then from the terminal to the、uh, venue, yes, and then all of that in reverse, yes, and then an additional two. One bus, well, well bu- two buses round trip,、yeah. to the second venue, and then we've got an ind- additional bus to go back to the hotel. <laughs> Been on the bus a lot today. It's most. What are the Olympics like in person? What are the Paralympics like in person? You spend a lot of time on the bus. That's right. That's right.、Uh, you might be able to hear it is the magical hour of vacuuming. It's so exciting because we really haven't had one yet. During the Paralympics, because we've either taped early or yesterday we、uh, met the ladies who are the magical vacuumers and、uh, exchanged pins, gave them cookies, or didn't exchange kin- pins, gave them some pins, gave them some cookies,、uh, used our magical、uh, interpreter volunteers <laughs> to, to explain what we were, because it's really hard to explain what a podcast is. And、uh, they were all lovely and had a good time. So now we 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 are here with vacuuming. Okay, all right. Let's get into what officiating or volunteer job would we want to do? What do you have today? Okay, so what I have today is not an officiating or volunteer job that exists. It、oh. is a volunteer job that I need. I need a personal guide because I keep getting lost, <laughs> and I am not getting lost. On the buses, I've been doing very well. I directed you from the wrong bus today、mm-hmm. to the right bus. That is I, correct. I'm doing very well with the buses. I am getting lost within the venues. So I didn't tell you this when we were at cross country today, and you left me in the stands because I wanted to stay and watch some more of the race, and you went back to the workroom. I couldn't figure out how to get back to the workroom, <laughs> and I asked the volunteers, and they were so—they're so sweet. They're just so amazing and really, really helpful. And I could not see where she was pointing, so she walked me over to the staircase <laughs> because I couldn't. The staircase. What you have to understand is that the workrooms are always in shoved someplace.、Mm-hmm. So the stairs today were scaffolding. Yes, because this、uh, the press tribune for the cross country biathlon venue is temporary stands, so you have to climb up scaffolding stairs to get to it, and so it's lost in the scaffolding in trying to get down. Couldn't find the steps. She took me there. Then I went to the bathroom. Couldn't find my way back to the workroom. <laughs> went to the wrong door. Couldn't find you. Then today in the hockey venue, I again went to the bathroom. Had toilet paper in the stall. <laughs> Always so excited when that happens now. And then I couldn't get back again. And thankfully, the lovely lady who was spraying the disinfecting machine—I saw the automatic disinfecting machine. I, I did too. I, I saw it spraying when I yes, came back with、yes. my hand cheese. And, and thankfully, when I saw her, I realized I had seen her on the way out.、Mm-hmm. And I went back in. She gave me a lovely Chinese heart pin. Because I I was apparently so happy to see her, she realized I was lost. So, apparently, of the nine thousand volunteers, I would ask one of them to please volunteer <laughs> to take me to and from bathrooms <laughs> or to and from the press room because I keep getting lost far out. <laughs> And this is going to be interesting because tomorrow I am going out to Yangcheng by myself. Get on the right bus in the right places. That's all I ask. 
buses are not my problem. It's bathrooms. <laughs> I won't drink anything. Oh, boy. <laughs> I, I can tell you that in Yangqing, an elevator is involved. Okay. Just putting, I'll just take I'm a volunteer with me. Yeah, I'll just, yeah. I'll just yeah, take that her one's, with me. It's a little com- and I only went there once, but it's, it's a little complicated to get around. So good luck to you. <laughs> I hope I hope we have a show tomorrow night. I'm just gonna say you might be doing the show solo tomorrow, and I'll be sleeping on the floor of the press room. Yanching. So, what's your job? Uh, my job is. Oh, uh, we were back at Para Ice Hockey tonight, and I would like to be one of the goalie tenders. And uh, what they do is the the goal has to uh, stick into the ice so that it maintains some sort of stability. But when it's time to uh, zamboni the ice in in the intermissions, they come out and they they have little buckets and little trowels or something, and they pour a bunch of of ice or slop or something into the holes so that the zamboni can go over them and make it icy. And then uh, they come in and kind of pound the pegs back in that the goal sits on. I would like that job. It seems very inefficient. It feels like there should be a better way to do that. Well, maybe we look into it. But I, I, I think they've pretty much figured out what's, efi- you know. Yeah, I'm sure. And they probably need the extra stability. Uh, you know, that thing gets snacked around a lot. So, I don't know. It looks interesting, though. Okay, let's look at today's schedule. We started off with para-alpine skiing. Uh, lots of super G action today. So for the men, it's it's all, again, three classifications, standing, sitting, vision impaired for both men and women. Starting off with the men's standing, gold went to uh, Lian Jingyi from China. Silver went to Marcus Salcher from Austria. And bronze went to Alexis Guimont from Canada. In the sitting class for men, gold went to uh, Jesper Perdison from Norway. Didn't he win yesterday? No. No. It was a Swedish Jesper, right? No, it's the same Jesper, but he got the silver because the silver medalist in this race, New Zealand's Corey Peters, go Silver Ferns, won the gold yesterday. So they flipped. Wow, that's pretty cool. As you said that. And then bronze went to Amori Taki from Japan. You have an interesting note here on Corey. Yeah, Corey Peterson is Corey Peters is 38 years old, so he is no rookie at this. But he has not been able to compete internationally since 2019 because of New Zealand's COVID restrictions. So if he left New Zealand, he wouldn't be able to go home. Right, and there's probably not a well. There's no com- competitions in New Zealand, and even if there were, they would have been shut down because nobody was coming in or out. Right. So he's been training, but he hasn't been able to compete. Wow. And he's got a gold and a silver so far in his first competition uh, back on the international stage in three years. So wow. nice for him. That's exciting. And he's probably just so jazzed to compete again. He is. I read the interview with him. He's <laughs> thrilled to, to be back. And he, he's been doing this a while. In the men's uh, Super G Vision impaired class, gold went to Neil Simpson from Great Britain, and his guide is Andrew Simpson, his older brother. Silver went to Giacomo Bertignoli from Italy with guide Andrea Rovelli, and bronze went to Johannes Eigner from Austria with guide Matteo Fleischmann. In the women's standing Super G, gold went to Zhang Mengqi from China, silver went to Marie Bochet from France, and bronze went to Alana Ramsey from Canada. In the sitting class, gold went to Muraoka Momoka from Japan. Silver went to Annalena Forster from Germany. And bronze went to Zhang Wenqing. You said Wen- those three names yesterday in downhill. Different order, oh, but yeah. same women meddled in downhill in Super G. Very nice. And then in the vision impaired class, gold went to Alexandra Rixova from Slovakia with guide... Ava Trachikova, silver went to Amena Fitzpatrick from Great Britain with guide Gary Smith, and bronze went to Zhu Daqing from China with guide Yan Han Han. You know, if I messed up Gary Smith, <laughs> I would be in trouble. <laughs> so uh, the mountain had a little fun today. Right, so I did the, it was all different counts, and mm-hmm. roughly between 10 and 15 percent 
of any race DNF'd today. Wow. And uh, we were in here in the morning in the media center, and it was on the feed, and there was one of the men's sitting class, I believe, took that one turn and just went too wide and could not get back on the course and went right into the fence, right into a camera, basically. So hopefully he's okay, and that was a little freaky to watch. I will say that. Uh, uh, scheduling note for the uh, Super Combined, due to high temperatures and high risk of snow melting, they've moved it up a day. So if uh, it was originally scheduled for March 8th, and it's now moved to March 7th. So already the weather is playing havoc in a different way, to be quite honest. I know. It's it's supposed to be 73 degrees Fahrenheit here on Thursday. We do not have clothes for this. Jeez. I mean, I have a couple of T-shirts, but like a jacket? What do I do? <laughs> and the weird thing is going to be we're going to curling and hockey, I think, on Thursday. Yeah, and it was cold. And I mean, I'm dressed for the mountain. I don't have a ton of layers on because it is warmer. So I do have my flannel lined pants on. I have two layers on top. And I was chilly in hockey. I just think maybe I'm just too tired. But anyhow, <laughs> I, I don't know what to do for 70 degree weather. I don't remember 70 degree weather. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny is when we go home, it's probably going to be colder there when it's been so cold here oh, say it ain't so i could use some heat um moving over to cross country this is what we went to today it was a uh, men's 18 it's a long distance race today for cross country so the men's 18 kilometer sitting race gold went to zheng peng from china silver went to mao zhongwu from china and bronze went to colin Cameron from Canada, who was warm enough to race in short sleeves. And I can't remember who it was on the Facebook page that he looked like Steve Rogers from Captain America. <laughs> this guy is jacked and he's got this shirt. And of course, because he's so jacked, he's wearing this short sleeve shirt that's like two sizes too small. <laughs> like, yes, go, Colin. <laughs> and then we saw the women's 12 kilometer sitting. Gold went to Yang Hong Chung from China. Silver went to Oksana Masters from USA. And bronze went to Li Pampan from China. So this was funny because I read the little story about Oksana Masters, which, I mean, when we saw her, she is just incredible. Like, she, you can see how fast she's moving, I think, better in person than you can on TV. And just the strength she has and the fluidity she has in her movement, it's so efficient. And she was just passing people. She started last in the field because they do um, uh, staggered starts. She started last. She finished first. And they're starting like 30 seconds behind each other. She really had to climb through the field to get to where she was. So because there's only one class you know, in the summer, we talked about the many, many different classes. So there is one class of sitting, one class of standing, one class of vision impaired. What they do is a factor time. So a second doesn't pass as a second, depending on the level of your disability. So Oxana Masters has 100% time. So a second passes as a second. Yang is 84%. So she gets a 16% time allowance, for lack of a better word, so that even though Oksana Masters crossed the finish line first because of that factor time, it, she was actually behind Yang. So it can get a little confusing if you're used to watching, like we were watching in the Olympics, a biathlon and cross country where they have those staggered starts or bicycle racing time mm -hmm. trials. You just watch the time checks and it was very easy to keep track. It was just a, a little visually complicated. Mm -hmm. But if you're watching the time checks, it'll make perfect sense. Right. And we had the benefit of a really good in-house announcer who was great at explaining things as they went along. And they had a lot of time checks along the way. Poor Oksana Masters. She said she could have raced faster because she really wanted to win gold. She had, ha She's had a silver in this event. Uh, she got silver in Sochi. She got bronze in Pyeongchang. She just was happy to be on the podium today. But, you know, looking back, she's like, she uh, she was trying not to do the go out hard and then die. So I think for her, that strategy, the, the race strategy she put in place worked. She was able to pick it up a little bit at the end because 
she had a lot of she had some gas left in the tank and she said she probably had a little bit too much because she got into the spot where she was really ready to make some moves and she didn't have enough distance left to make the move she needed to make and in this course it's not very technical so there's not a lot of places where you can make up time like on a hill or uh, even on a downhill because she got really aerodynamic in her downhills too um there's more it's a different kind of challenge than some other courses on the circuit and this was a lot of loops they didn't go out very far no they did not they did like a a five laps of a three kilometer route right so it was odd because usually they go out and come back in Mm -hmm. and so they're not doing the same terrain so many times yeah 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 so it, it the bonus of doing this loop is that you see more in person I guess I mean there's an area they turn kind of right in front of where the press tribune and the mix zone is which is off to the side and you can see them going across the uh, center of the venue and they do go kind of out far then and then they come back in but there's a lot more that the in-house crowd can see with this kind of race set up. And Kendall Gretsch was also in this race. She ended up fourth and she was back and forth. Like she was making up time and then losing time and making up time. And she was very frustrated at the end of that race. I saw her finish uh, before I got lost. And she was very disappointed with her time. Oh, that's too Which bad. is frustrating. That's too bad. Well, hopefully she's got some more races left. They've got sprint. Okay. Well, there we go. Uh, Let's take a quick break to talk about our Red Envelope campaign. This show does cost money to produce, and you all have been super generous in supporting us through the Kickstarter campaign that got us here, through Patreon patronage. But we're coming up on a a lull in our cycle where we've got two and a half years until another Olympics and Paralympics, and games time is when we get more listeners usually. We're really hoping that you all can help us crowdfund enough to get us some operating budget to get us through to Paris 2024. So uh, we're celebrating the Lunar New Year with this Red Envelope campaign because that's what they do here in China. And we are asking for donations of at least $8 because eight is a lucky number here symbolizing good fortune. So please go to flamealivepod.com support to donate. We understand that not everyone has the means. So if you don't have the means at this time, Tell a friend about the show, because we still need to find more of our people. We love the fact that the Facebook group has grown a lot since uh, the beginning of the games, and it's become an even more fun place, and more of our people, the better. Subscribe, share, and review, (laughs) right? Yeah, I know. (laughs) And I do want to mention, if you're catching up later and the Paralympics have ended, we are always up for a donation. (laughs) You can still go to flamealivepod.com slash support to donate to the show. All right, para ice hockey. Where we ended our day. That's right. So two games we did not see, Korea versus USA and Italy versus Slovakia. USA kind of made mincemeat of Korea 9-1. to one. Wow, ouch, ouch, ouch. And then the Italy-Slovakia game was much closer. Italy won that 2-1. to one. So the standing is in Group A. The USA is uh, in first with two wins, no losses. Canada and Korea are both 0-1. They will play each other tomorrow to decide who moves on to the next round. Wow. It's weird, it, it's weird when you have groups and then group play doesn't seem like it's very much, to be quite honest. Well, there was supposed to be somebody else in this group. That's right. They decided to invade another country instead of play hockey. (laughs) Ouch. In the other game we saw, it was China versus Czech Republic. China won 5-2. to China's an interesting team in sled hockey. They are very aggressive. Very aggressive. Very intense. Yes. I think it reflects their coach. Oh, okay. Uh, As I mentioned yesterday, their coach is Russian. It is Nikolai... Sharshanov, and this team plays like an old school Soviet team. Yeah, they're they're bruisers. It's very intense to watch them. They seem like they're everywhere, all over the rink. It it seems like there's way more than five people on the ice, 
Poor Czech Republic, just their passing game was non-existent. The shots on goal were like 21 for China and 8 for Czech Republic. It was so one-sided. Um, China got three goals within like three minutes. Yeah, top. within the second period. It yeah. was very quick. And two of those goals were quirky goals like, oh, that shouldn't have happened. And that happened yesterday too. So it seems like when China gets on the ice, they make these weird things happen and take advantage of them. But what was interesting was the captain of the China team got pulled from the line at the end of the game where they all shake hands. The ref comes over because they started to get into it. And that is so against hockey etiquette. I right. mean, that's, that's about as, as disrespectful as, as you can get to not properly acknowledge the other team. I don't know if you noticed the very sweet, very sweet, I have no idea if she's very sweet, but the very pretty, very petite Chinese woman standing on the sidelines with the Chinese team. She's the interpreter for the very scary Russian coach. Oh, wow. <laughs> I will pay attention next time because I do want to see them play again. They are an interesting team to watch, just that style of play. And they are gunning for victory. And the, the Czech goalie, he when he let two goals go by and... and just was crushed at what was going on because some of them, they both looked like they could have been saved. He was down. Then his own player ran over his hand in a big skirmish in, in front of the goal. And you had thought that it was another a repeat of last night. That the Chinese player slid into the goal yeah, again. Yeah, but the reason the Czech player slid into his own goalie was, gee, there was a Chinese player that kind of sideswiped him. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so that was uh, that was tough to see because it was not good. They He had to be pulled out. He, it looks like his hand might have been cut, but uh, hopefully he's not too badly injured and can come back. They had Luckily, there's a backup goalie. You always need a backup. That's right. Um, you were able to find something. Oh, this was great because your Czech friend was there again, cheering like crazy from down the down the table in the press tribune. But he found the answer to my question, See? which was fantastic. So he, he came by today and he said, were you the person who asked me about the stuffed animal? And I said, yes. And it turned out that the, the stuffed animal was not, I buried the lead because the stuffed animal was hard, part of a whole setup that in fact had, you called it an action figure. I called mm -hmm. it a statue on top of a chair and the stuffed animal was underneath the chair, but the, the action figure goes with the team when they go to the dressing room, which is why I only saw the stuffed animal in the Czech flag sweater. So what that's all about is one of their coaches had to stay behind in the Czech Republic because of COVID protocol. From, from uh, what my Czech friend said, he's not vaccinated. So he could not come to China. So this action figure slash with his base of stuffed bear, I think. That was not clarified, but it is a stuffed animal with a check sweater is representing their missing coach. The OBS got involved. <laughs> the, uh, that's the Olympic Broadcasting <laughs> Service. I, I, so everybody had, had banded together to find this answer. So... I'm very pleased to share this. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to share with this game was several members of Team USA were in attendance. My guess is because they have not gotten much information about Team China, and they are expecting Team China to come out of this group. So there was several of the players there, and they were a little loud. Well, you talked about yesterday how there was a big crowd. There were, again... A lot of spectators tonight. They pretty much filled their COVID protocol of spectators in uh, the half of the arena. And uh, they were very pro-China. So <laughs> waving their flags, doing some cheering, doing some clapping. But they were getting into the game. They seemed to really understand what yes. was happening, yes. which was yes. nice. Yes. Because it's, I mean, there's certainly not a hockey tradition, as we talked about with the Olympics. Right. 
in, in China, but the fans really seemed to understand how the game worked, which was mm-hmm. which was great to see. And you had talked yesterday how there was not the typical brash yelling, <laughs> but we got it tonight. <laughs> yeah, the USA team provided that. <laughs> and at one point, one of the players yelled T-bone when two of the players collided, which then led to, and I could not tell which player it was because they were on, they were not in our closed loop. They're mm-hmm. in their own closed loop and, and they were far away and, you know, they're not matching quite up to their pictures at the moment. But we saw a very animated conversation between a volunteer and this particular player where clearly he was explaining what T-bone meant. <laughs> so I believe now that all of the Chinese hockey fans are going to start yelling T-bone, <laughs> which would be fantastic. <laughs> And awful at the same time because a T-bone hit is not good. No, and I believe that's a penalty. Yes. Because of safety reasons. Well, it depends. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but, you know, if you T-bone the right way, that's a penalty. Especially with the sled. Yes. It's a lot easier to do it when you are actually long enough to be part of a T. Right, right, right. Uh, Moving over to para snowboard. We had the snowboard cross qualification. This was a men's cross uh, upper limb, lower limb one, lower limb two, and women's cross lower limb two. We did uh, two rounds today, and then they'll do knockout rounds tomorrow. Brenna Huckabee, who was originally denied an opportunity to compete because of classification, she is in second place so far after skidding out in her first run, but her second run was good enough to move on to the next round. And then our next book club book author is uh, Mike Schultz, and he qualified third in the men's SB Lower Limb 1 competition. And uh, just a side note, we will be discussing his memoir, which is, just came out this year, It's called Driven to Ride. We'll talk about that in late spring, early summer with Book Club Claire. So good luck to him. He's sort of a a waiting for his Shuk Flastani citizenship. Yeah, well, we're waiting to talk to him. I know, we've tried. (laughs) (laughs) But between, you know, his training and our Beijing. So I I say he's applied. Okay. But he hasn't taken the test yet. Okay. And and had his swearing in (laughs) ceremony. (laughs) And finally, we had more round-robin action in wheelchair curling tonight. In the morning session, we had Slovakia versus Norway. Norway won 9-3. to three. Uh, Slovakia scored three in the fifth end to get within a point, but Norway then got five points in the next two ends, and that just ended it after seven ends. China beat, or Sweden beat China 5-1 to one in seven ends. In the afternoon session, Switzerland beat Korea 8-7. to And Switzerland here came from behind. And they tied it in the eighth end. And then got one point in the extra end to win it. So that's a real big boost victory for Switzerland. Canada just rolled over Latvia 10 to 3. They got four Canada got four points in the first end, never looked back. Game ended after six ends. I've never seen it. I mean, not that I've watched that much curling. I've watched, you know, a couple of Olympics <laughs> worth of curling. But to end two ends early, early. Is, is very unusual, yes? I, I would think so, yes. But there was just probably no way Latvia was coming back. Then uh, USA got its first win against Estonia, 9-6. to six. Uh, USA got three points in the second end. Estonia tied. But then U.S. got fourth and four points in the fifth end. Estonia tried to come back. They came within two. But USA added two more points in the ninth end, to, or in the last end, to seal the victory. So I hope that turns around their momentum. Yes, yes, definitely. And then in the evening session, China beat Estonia nine to three in seven ends. China scored three f- points in the first end. Estonia could never get a good counterattack going. So tough day for Estonia, to be quite honest. They really got beat a couple times. And then Korea beat Norway 9-4 to in seven ends. Korea scored early and often in this uh, matchup. Norway got within one, but Korea got four points in the seventh to win the game. And then Latvia beat Slovakia 8-4 to in seven ends. And Latvia came back in the last three ends with six points there. And Slovakia tried in the eighth end, but they had to call it a game partway through. So in this tournament, the standings are Canada and Sweden are both undefeated. 
Norway, Latvia are both two and one. Great Britain is one and one. Slovakia, China, Korea, Switzerland, USA are one and two. And Estonia is O oh and two. So what is our Shuklastani curler doing tomorrow? So Steve and Team USA have two matches, one against undefeated Canada and the second against Norway. Canada will be interesting. I mean, they are really strong so far. They are not here to play. Nope, nope, nope. We would like to thank today's Kickstarter collectors, Mary Ellen Callahan and the dulcet tones of Jason Bryant. And we also want to say thank you to our mascot for this half of the games. It is our lovely cat, Riza. She loves everyone and everything and wants to be a part of everything all the time. Unlike her older sister, Quinley, who is a brown tabby, who hates everybody except Mama Claire. There are two kinds of cats in this world. There's the cats who love everybody and the cats who hate everybody. And Claire has one of each. But the pictures we have of Riza, you can see how much she loves everything. We also do have a couple of pictures coming with Riza and Quinley together. Oh, because well. for as much as Quinley seems to hate everything, I think she actually loves her baby sister. Well, that will do it for this episode. Tune in again tomorrow for another day of competition from Beijing. Celebrate the games with us. Our Keep the Flame Alive Facebook group is the place to hang out with other listeners and Jill and myself when she's not laughing at me. Jill is on Twitter. I am on Instagram. Both are at Flame Alive Pod. You can also email us at flamealivepod at gmail.com or call or text us at 208 208- Three five two six three four eight. That's two zero eight. Flame it. We will catch you back here tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening, and until next time, keep the flame alive. <laughs>